Keith here and in this video I'm going to show you a few Excel tips for working with your data file and these are in no particular order. One that's handy to do is to go and write justify the first row perhaps not the first cell, let's put that one back left maybe center and then the labels, column variable labels, will line up the numbers. You can also center the whole spreadsheet, um, but then that makes the numbers look a bit funny. Another thing is to put the cursor there, or select that cell, and head over to View, Freeze Panes, Freeze Panes. And now what that means is that I keep my column headings and rows if I scroll around in the spreadsheet. Okay, what else have I got on my list? Oh, um, I need now to add in some categorical variables. And I'm going to put in rep. I actually can't remember what order. I'll call this IBC for impact versus control. And I'll call this one site. Um, because I can't write, quite remember. So replicates one, two. Oh, I do get so tired of doing the same thing. Let me select that and drag to get the full set. Um, now each site here has five reps, so I may as well copy and paste. There we go. Uh, I wonder if Excel has got any other tricks. What if I select the two lots and drag? Oh, that's very odd. What's happening there? What Excel is trying to do there is actually run a regression line through those points and predict the next ones in the series. Now, that's obviously not what I want to do. So sometimes when Excel doesn't want to do what you want to do, you can hold down the control thing. And you see, now remember, the little black box here, and I'm putting the cursor over that, hold down the control thing, it says plus. And let's see what happens now. Yes, it's just repeated the whole series. I'm liking Excel a bit better. There we go, and the next one will be 2. Um, what happens if I drag here? Oh, uh, yeah, no, 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 it's not working at all. Not working at all. Um, let me just put a 2 in there. And no, still doesn't want to do it. Okay, so it's key on its own, but I need to have two values to tell Excel what I need it to do. So I can keep doing that to fill in the site codes, but. Again, I am rather lazy, so it's kind of a quicker way. Equals plus one. Now, doo -doo -doo. whoops, going to select the cell. There we go. Easier. Um, now, impact, and um, let's just set this whole column to be right. Okay, that's cool there. Next will be control, so C, whoops, C, O. And that will be cool there. And done. There are things, there are ways, reasons why I do like Excel for data manipulation, not for graphing and not so much for analysis, although I will show you a bit, but for this sort of stuff it's really excellent. Now, this um, that rep there is not really accurate and as you've seen in the other videos it's often handy to have the rows labeled with something meaningful because then you can get those labels plotted onto graphs, particularly in PAST. So let me introduce you to concatenate. Concatenate. 
hit tab and it will expand. Now concatenate pins stick together. So what I'm going to do is first I want that and I'm working in the same row where I've typed in that formula or started to type in that formula. Put in a comma that put in a comma. Now I like to do selective uh, highlight things a little bit here so I'm going to put quotes dash quotes comma that okay and there we go drag that down and I've got labels which are done so uh, impact versus control site and replicate aren't we good aren't we clever okay so that's concatenate now Excel can do some calculations for you and this works for either rows or columns. Now here it probably doesn't make too much sense to do an average across the rows because they're all different kinds of things though you could get an average species abundance. So you can see there all I need to do is add in the bracket and I'm getting the average depth across the whole area and if I drag across let's just do the environmental variables species number and a type I get the averages now back on home this little one is helpful for changing the number of decimals now there are more than just average I can also do equal sum now sum of depths doesn't make too much sense but I'll do it for illustrative purposes drag across it does make sense to do sums for species let's go across here to crustacean number five just to illustrate I can also do average species uh, average species abundance so I'm just looking at my list of things I've done. I've done average, I've done sum. Now, let's have a look here. You're, you've just seen the formula I'm going to do. Um, I can see here that the species is absent from some locations and likewise here for crustacean 4. Now it might be handy to get a count of the number of samples the species was found in. So this is where count if comes in. You can see count will give you the number of cells in a range that contains numbers. Count A, ones that aren't blank, blank, count if, bracket. So the range is the set of samples, so that's these here. And then the criterion. Criteria is what I want to do. And what I want to do is, and I've got to put this in quotes, so quote, greater, zero, close quote, close brackets. There we go. Handy. Drag that across again to illustrate. So for those five species, two were present in all samples, one was present in 26, one was present in 25, and crustacean 4 was only present in 19, which is a little bit over half the samples. So that is good. Now, sometimes you want to have a quick look at the data or have something that gives you a quick indication of what's going on. And here conditional formatting is your friend. Now I'm just going to select the samples for the hydrocarbons. Click here, we can highlight cells that are greater than, less than, between, equal to, containing particular text or duplicate values. We can also highlight the top 10, above average, below average, and so on. We can also do data bars, which is what I'm going to look at. Color scales and icon sets I haven't found to be too useful. But Excel will actually give you a demo of what it's going to look like if I do that. Isn't that nifty? Now I can just run my eye down and see quite easily which samples have the higher levels of hydrocarbon. So it's I've got my impacts and controls mixed up, haven't I? So let's fix that by doing a search. 
Control H, replace. Now you've got to be careful here because if I replace impact with control and then try to com replace control with control, it ain't going to work. So I usually stick a, a symbol and then I can go through and get rid of those. So CO now go to IM, but options match entire cell contents. Otherwise it'll match the CO at. Now it's only going to place the, replace the ones that are CO. Finally I can go CO at, replace with CO. And I've got things sorted. And what helped me get that sorted out? It was actually using conditional formatting down here. Let's look at another example. Let's go down here. Actually, I'll let's work with a tote. Oh, yes, a tote. Now, I don't actually know whether you have to do this. I think you have to do this separately for the different um, sets of data you want. Um, right, top, bottom, above, average. Let's have below average. There we go. So now I can look and say, oh, look at that. The below average sites, in terms of abundance total, are matching up exactly, or almost exactly, with the amount of oil that are present. Now these, this one here, obviously, site here is obviously getting less oil than this one, and less oil than this one. Okay, that's everything on my list in terms of formatting and so on. We can also do some analyses. So um, now in order to do these, uh, where do I need to go? I need to go into File, Options. Now this will depend on the version of Excel you've got running. Um, Add-ins. Uh, nothing seemed to happen there. Options. Add-ins. There we go. Excel add-ins. Go. And I need Analysis Tool Pack on. For VBA, you don't need that on to do the analysis the way I am going to show you. Uh, you do need that if you're going to run using the Visual Basics applications. In other words, do, writing your own analysis, which I sometimes do. Um, now, let's select those and go to data and data analysis over here and these are the things I can do. Out of a single factor, two factor with and without replication, correlation, descriptive stats. Um, the next one's not so interesting. Then we've got t-tests, we've got regression and that's about it. So let's go here for correlation. Input range. Now let's see, I think I can do multiples here. And remember I'm just selecting the data, not the summaries. Labels are in the first row, it's grouped by columns. Uh, let's put it onto a new worksheet please. And there we are, correlations between all the pairs of variables. Now normally I wouldn't do a great deal of analysis in Excel because things like PAST, Excel Stats, Minitab, PSPP are more useful. Now, um, let me illustrate just one other, um, and I don't have to select, keep forgetting I don't have to select the data because it will come up in here. Regression. For ANOVA instant, incidentally, you've got to have the data set up in the right way that Excel understands it, so it's actually easy to use Excel stats or PAST. Regression, so input Y and X. So what I'm going to do is I want to see if I can predict number of species from the environmental variables. So this is a multiple regression. I do have labels. I am not don't need to figure with any of that. Um, I'll put on residual plots. I won't get the residuals actually coming out. I'll get the normal probability plots. 
Okay, calculating it. There we go. So, um, let's go through it bit by bit. And it helps to expand out that column. This is a multiple regression, so I'm trying to predict the number of species from depth, sediment, nutrients and hydrocarbon. So the multiple R is the correlation we get including all of those variables. 0.97 effectively, so it's very high. Um, and the R squared, which is the amount of variation in number of species predicted by those variables, is 93%. Uh, the adjusted R squared takes into account the fact that we're using more than one predictor variable and it's a characteristic of a regression that as you increase the number of predictors the R squared goes up. Um, the an 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 table of ANOVA down here is testing the significance of the regression so the total variation in number of species is divided up into the bit that's due to the regression and the residual much as in one factor ANOVA, we get an F value and we get a P value. Now that P value is 3.59 e to the minus 14, which means it's 14 zeros, sorry, I should say 0 0.13 zeros, 359, very tiny, much less than 0 0.05, so the regression as a whole is significant. That does not mean, however, that each individual variable is doing anything. Let's go down here and look at the values. For depth, p-value associated with that is greater than 0 0.05, so it's not significant. Likewise for sediment, likewise for nutrients. Only the hydrocarbon variable is actually significant. Now one thing you've got to remember or know about multiple regressions is that the results you get depend on the variables you put in. So if I left hydrocarbons out, one of those other variables might then be significant. Likewise, if I leave out depth, the results for sediment and nutrients can change. So in multiple regression analysis, people are often looking at different sets of variables to find which set are actually um, the most efficient in predicting what's going on. Um, these are residual plots and I'm basically looking to see if anything odd is going on if I eventually ever get to see the graph. Which doesn't look like it's going to show me. Okay, can I drag it over the side there? There we are. Um, and that really looks all fine. There's no trend showing up in there and the residuals are pretty much scattered around. Yeah, it's helpful, isn't it? I think that's due to the mode I'm operating. That looks fine. Depth looks fine. And hydrocarbons look fine, though there's a couple of Big, uh, um, big residuals because there are a couple of samples which have large value of hydrocarbon. The normal probability plot, we're looking for this to be on a straight line if the observations are normally distributed and pretty much they aren't. But then the numbers of species, um, we wouldn't necessarily expect them to be normally distributed. So I'm not terrifically concerned by that. Um, and I expect the results to be reliable. Okay, so that's a few things you can use to get started just having a quick look.